How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and we are back with more post commentary dual videos. We got Pepe vs. Lanny and Mermel post adjusted ban list that uh, will be effective February 8th, 2016. So I believe that's tomorrow if I upload the day that I record this. Um, so yeah, I've got another match, uh, the same matchup recorded. Uh, Pepe's just got a little bit of a different build. Um, so if you guys want to see that matchup, uh, just let me know, I'll post it. Uh, it's another Pepe vs. Lanny and Mermel post adjusted list. I'll post that if you want to see it. Um, if not, it's fine. Uh, but yeah. So, I'm gonna go out one for one out that Neptibus. Which is actually really awesome. I love one for one that, because then you can search D.Va. And that's still your normal summon. Or even better, if you have a heavy infantry in your hand, you can normal summon that. And then normal summon out your D.Va because two normal summons is pretty cool, and then you can make more plays from there. Uh, it's all about that normal summon. Uh, yeah. So, Deep Sea Deep is going to come down. I, I could have made a Trish play here. Uh, I opted not to. Uh, I would just have to summon out infantry there, and then add, per se, Pike or Turge off of Teus. I actually don't think I was playing Pike during this time. I think I was just playing Turge. Uh, I think Turge is a little better because it adds back any of your really good Atlanteans or like D.Va back to your hand from Grave. So yeah, I just like Turge a little better right now than Pike. But anyways, yeah, I could have made Trish by going into Tatsunoko uh, and then synchroing the entry that would have been in my field with the Turge in my hand. But instead, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to bounce back Teus, summon out Megalo, discarding Teus and Gund. Gun specialist Teus. Megalo adds me Sphere. I've I, I opened both Mizuchi scales, uh, which is really mediocre actually, uh, because they don't do absolutely anything. Uh, this game, you will make a full field uh, without even triggering one of those. Uh, the only spell in his hand he has is Instant Fusion. He ends up ditching that off Summoner Monk, anyways to make a, a really good play involving Pendulum Sorcerer, so, yeah. Uh, I really do want to play the Abyss Scale of the Kraken, it is just a monster negation, uh, so it would have been way more relevant in this matchup, and I think in a lot of matchups, I think uh, spells, especially in a Pendulum format, is not, it's not the best, because uh, they can still activate the pendulum card just like placing it in their scale and not using the effect and then pendulum summon out everything make ignis or spin back the stuff and then use their spell effects it's really not that hard to get around even after the adjusted list as you can see he's gonna go summoner monk into sorcerer sorcerer destroying himself and summoner monk now that it has been ruled that Sorcerer only needs to destroy cards to add Performer Pale Pendulum cards to your rear deck to hand. So he's going to get his free scale of Monkey Board and Lizard Draw. So yeah, pretty busted combo with Summoner Monk. Really amazing, unexpected card. Uh, I think that a lot of people are going to end up playing. Uh, as well as Armageddon Knight, as you'll see here. Armageddon Knight's going to send Shadal Dragon, and the other one's going to send Zephyros. The first Shadal Dragon will hit the one uh, Mizuchi. Now he's got a little bit of a utility with that Zephyros, he can return uh, pretty much anything on his field to his hand to summon it, and then he'll take 400 for it. And with the more dark monsters in this deck, he can make uh, Evil Swarm Nightmare a little bit better, and uh, a little easier I should say. Uh, and that card is actually really annoying to run into since it's not once return, um, <laughs> it's just kind of busted. Especially uh, against me, I make a pretty bad play uh, when it's on the field. He ends up just booking two of my Megalos and it, it sucks really bad. Not a whole lot I can do there. So right now he is baiting on what to do with these uh, cards that he has now. Sorry about the shifting of that camera angle. He's going to go Honor Arc. Honor Arc's going to steal my Megalo. Getting rid of the other Abyss Scale. Uh, so, yeah, both gone, and they didn't really do anything at all, because, <laughs> yeah. Uh, monkey board, 
He's gonna use his effect. He's gonna add a Heart Naga, I'm pretty sure. And then he's going to return that monkey board to his hand and special summon Zephyros to make another rank 4. Obviously, if Talmace was still legal, he would be able to go into Infinity right now if he really needed to, but he's going to make Nightmare instead. Now setting up for some defensive plays, not so much offensive plays this time around. He can beat over pretty much everything. So yeah. And the reason that uh, the Sorcerer can get over the Teus or the uh, Delorean, one or the other, it's going to be one card in this Pendulum Scale is giving his monsters an attack boost. It was Part Naga because he bounced back the Monkey Board and then put the Part Naga in the scale to give it up 300 give it 300 attack boost for like all the perform pal stuff that he controls. And then I'll main phase 2 and then go into end phase sphere with Lind. I'm going to summon out Megalo. You won't book that. So, I was kind of confused at that. Maybe he just didn't need to. I go ahead and read the card there anyways. Uh and I drew into Turge. Which kind of sucks. Would have much rather been Ineptibus. That way I can send some Atlanteans, do some cool things. But I ended up normal summoning it just to tribute it off with Megalo just so I can get that double attack arena. Clear some of the stuff off his field. I think I go after the Nightmare and the Honor Arc just to get my Megalo back in Grave, and then I'll pass. Still got that monkey board in his hand. Very, very powerful card. Just end up recycling it with the Zephyros. Very, very good card. And this is his first build that he threw together uh, post-adjusted list. And like I said, he does have... He did switch it up a little bit and uh, play a different list in the next match that we ended up playing. So if you guys want to see that, like I said can uh, go ahead and make that happen but yeah he searched lizard draw off of king of feral limbs which is absolutely busted the fact that you can search that card off king of feral limbs and basically go into your pot of greed play lizard draw is so good and there's dweller and i draw instant fusion i was down to a thousand life points right there too i could have drew anything else and i ended up drawing that so, <laughs> that really, really sucks. Probably one of the worst cards that I could drew. Probably the worst card that I could have drawn. So going into game two, I'm going to have to go second. Uh, just hoping he can't make first turn Dweller, but I'm pretty uh, confident in that ability since I opened up Max C and Effect Veiler. So I'm pretty sure I can at least hold back him from trying to uh, extend a little bit and go into Dweller. Uh... Yeah, if I wouldn't have opened those, it might have been a different story. It's just it's just risk-taking, I guess. Uh, I, us I just don't really know whether or not I want to go first or second against this deck because they have such easy access to rank 4s. They make rank 4s like it's their job. Rank 4 dot deck. Uh, that it just can make Dweller too easy. And he already knows what I'm playing, obviously. And I'm going to chain Maxi to the activation of his scales. So get some extra draws, hold back the summoning power. But yeah, it's just like, I don't know whether or not I want to go first or second. If I go first, I open the chance of not opening well or opening really good and making an uncrackable field, or at least something that he can't completely get through uh, on his first turn or risk going second. Just hope he doesn't make Dweller, and if he does make Dweller, hope I have an out to it, like Chalice or something. It's going to normal summon Armageddon Knight. In fact, Valor will come down. Both hand traps burned, and uh, he's not going to special summon anything, so I'm down two cards. That's all right. We got one for one. We're going to discard Elanian Marksman, summon out Deep Sea, not Deep Sea Diva. That is definitely not Deep Sea Diva. I wish you could summon Deep Sea Diva off that. But we're going to get Neptibus. Neptibus is going to send Dragoons as per usual, at least when I uh, use its effect. I usually send Dragoons as a usual suspect. 
and then I usually end up adding Dragoons and Megalo, just because um, they're usually just the best cards at that time to add. This time I'm going to be adding Diva and Dragoons. And like I said earlier, at least I think I said this earlier, it's good when you can one for one out the Neptibus. Probably the best thing, because then you can search more Sea Serpents, and then you can do what I just did there, which is make fields with Diva, because you are you have a normal summon, and then Diva can go grab uh, infantry, and then infantry can get you another normal summon like Dragoons. So Dragoons is gonna swing in directly, and so will everybody else, and then I'll Trish away his luster, the only luster, and then get rid of the Armageddon Knight that he has. And he is going to scoop right there, and we're going to go into game three. So surprising victory. Uh, the hand traps were enough to shut him down, uh, and then the combos were good enough to uh, basically get the Trish off, make him go minus, get rid of that luster pendulum, so yeah, pretty good, pretty good uh, hand I was dealt there. I think if I wouldn't have drawn the Maxi or Valor, it would have been a little different. So, we'll start things off with Teus discarding Dragoons, adding me a Diva and a Gund. I've got the infantry in hand. Infantry allow me to get that extra normal summon of Deep Sea Diva. And then we can special summon out Neptibus off Diva. Sending Dragoons, adding Psydra, and adding Megalo, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm gonna go for Mulan. Which was actually kind of mis a mistake on my part, because I overlooked something. So I'm gonna add Marksman and Infant or Marksman and Mulan. But here I realize that if I go to Synchro for what I want to Synchro for, that uh, I'll have one too many cards in my grave for Mulan. Just six, one short. So I have to make this weird play. Mulan's gonna bounce, or not Mulan, uh, Deloren's gonna bounce the infantry back to my hand for use next turn. I guess there's the uh, Mizuchi coming in a little bit to negate the terraforming. He does play chicken game and pseudo space. Chicken game very, very good in the deck now that Pendulum Sorcerer can destroy your own chicken game to end up searching you a card. And also you're getting rid of it so your opponent can't use it next turn. So he's going to discard upstart, upstart off of the Summoner Monk for Pendulum Sorcerer. Pendulum Sorcerer making the same play it did. Game 1 destroying himself and the Summoner Monk to clear his field a little bit. He's going to need room for the plays he's going to make. It's just, it's just busted how that literally Sorcerer can turn anything into a full set of scales. Just like that. He's gonna go Gitartle and Lizard Draw. That Pot of Greed play is so good. It's absolutely ridiculous. Lizard Draw and Gitartle are a insane combo. So many draws. Doesn't even need that upstart. Just cause he's got his draws anyways. Yeah, I think his hand is pretty busted at the moment. And I may have screwed up my play a little bit, but it really doesn't matter too much because I'm just about to get dugied on. Surprising that the deck, the deck still has triple sorcerer, so it's still, still probably the best deck in my opinion of the format. Maybe not as you know dominant, but still up there just because they still have sorcerer at three and sorcerer at three is just ridiculous. He's gonna add silver claw. That will end up getting up to really high attack due to cards in his Pendulum Zone. With a, If he has Pendulum Sorcerer in his uh, Pendulum Zone, boost it up by 1,000 to 28, and then it'll gain an extra 300 due to its own effect, putting it up to 3,100. So yeah, pretty good card. Definitely going to be able to out anything that I got on my side of the field, even if I had the Mizuchi equipped. King of Paralympus is going to add Mass Chameleon because... Who needs Luster Pendulum anymore when you've got Mass Chameleon? Pendulum Summoning 4. He's got Double Vector. He's going to Synchro for Ignister. 
Ignis is going to summon out Master. Master, actually a very, very good card just because it can be used uh, right off the bat for Nixies. I mean, and you don't have to go get Luster off it anymore just because you kind of want to save your Luster. And Master just allows for some cool setup plays. Especially when you're playing cards like Magister Paladin. So he's going to pop, spin his monkey board back into his deck. That's what happened there. So, Silver Claw up to, I believe, 21. Because I don't think he has uh, Wizard in his scale. But he, did ha he does make Dweller anyways, and Salvage. So good, my hand is so good right now, but the Dweller absolutely just ruining everything. Uh, if I would have seen... We didn't We didn't side, by the way. We both agreed not to side for this matchup. He didn't have a side deck built. Um, so I figured it would be fair if I didn't ha use mine. Uh, so we just played these matches. Basic, no siding. Uh, so I'm just going to go for a, a level 7 synchro play, that's just how good Infantry Diva is. Go for Gungnir. I can get rid of some dead cards in my hand like Mulan. And I get rid of Turge, I think. Or Gund, because there's not, I don't think there's any big Mermails in my grave that I really need to bring, bring back. I'll save the Turge and the Neptibus because I feel they're most useful. And then he's going to rip the Rota. This actually ends up winning the game, just that reinforce in the armor he drew. And that is going to send Zephyros, Armageddon Knight, very, very strong. Zephyros is going to come out, returning his, I believe it was, uh, monkey board back to his hand. Not really sure what he returned. Uh, but then he's going to go Digusto Emerald. I think he, yeah, he's going to recycle. The Dweller, obviously very, very smart play, and uh, some more of his Pendulum stuff in Grave. Wavering Eyes, off the draw. Now I believe he has Lizard Draw, and something else in his Pendulum Scale. There's Pendulum Sorcerer. It's pretty much GG at this point. He's got a lot of advantage. Yeah, Arc and Trapeze Magician just equal game. So yeah. And there you have it. Post-adjusted list Pepe. Still very, very strong. This was the first build that he threw together. Uh, still got a little still got some kinks to work out. But nonetheless, still the best deck of the format, as we can see. Due to Pendle of Sorcerer still being at 3, and Wavering Eyes still being a card. Anyways, like I said earlier, if you guys want to see the match following this one, same two decks facing each other, just uh, Pepe has a slightly different build. If you want to see that, I'll go ahead and post it. That's no problem for me. Anyways, leave a like if you enjoyed, leave your comments and thoughts down in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe if you are new. The support is always greatly appreciated. I cannot stress that enough. And, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Winter Kill is signing out. We'll see you in the next one.